Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where Art Kirsch and I are again, once again, with the lovely coach Michelle Fabrega. Michelle, good to see you again. Hi, John. Hi, Art. Hi, Michelle. Hey, I have a question for you. Um, maybe you can uh, help our, me and our audience with this. Because um, you're a love and relationship coach. And sometimes, whether it's a relationship with somebody that's very close to you, uh, such as a, a child or a parent or uh, a loved one, a, a lover, uh, there are things about them that are annoying. And um, sometimes we just we just don't say anything, but sometimes they're really annoying. You know, whether it's beyond leaving the toilet seat up or down or whatever it is that they might do. Uh, can you maybe address some strategies for, for speaking to somebody that you really care about, but who does something that really bugs you? And what you're really trying to do is get a, a better resolution uh, without them thinking that you're just complaining. Uh, do you have any uh, strategies for that? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, I actually read a really great book recently called The Squeaky Wheel by Guy Winch. And it has a lot of incredible ideas actually out there about being effective in our complaining, right? Because a lot of times we basically, you know, something doesn't work for us either, like you said, in a relationship or even just, you know, at a, at a store or, you know, a product we buy, whatever. And um, we have this belief that, you know, it doesn't really help to complain. You know, I just keep it to myself, whatever. But, but actually, so we don't even bother. And so obviously, if we don't even complain and bring the issue up, we can't get any kind of resolution. We can't make a change, right? So, but the problem is that often we complain to the wrong people. We tell our friends about how annoying our, our spouse is when they do this or don't do that, but we never bring the issue to our spouse. So um, there's a lot of great ideas about how to complain effectively in this book, and I highly recommend it. Hmm. You're going to share a few of them with us? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, She's yeah. just promoting the book. She's a cheap <laughs> shell for promoting the book. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so give us a couple of tastes of things that we can do so that we can make yeah. our un discomfort with a situation or whatever it is known and perhaps getting a positive resolution out of it rather than not saying anything at all and just walk, don't walk away, just walk away mad or whatever it is. We don't want to walk away mad. We want to improve things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and one of the things that kind of surprised me just myself is that I'm kind of like an anti-complainer. I tend to be sort of like negative about complaining in the sense that like, oh, it's not a good thing to do. You, you know, we should not complain. We should find another way to say it. But but one of the things he talks about is he, and, and maybe you've heard of this concept before, but he talks about the complaint sandwich. And the idea behind the complaint sandwich is that is we basically build, you know, it has two fluffy, nice pieces of bread on the outside. And then the inside is the meat. And that's the meat, which is the complaint that we're trying to bring forward and hope to get some kind of resolution on. So um, so I, I'm gonna go into how to how to create a complaint sandwich and just serve it up to someone. So is the idea that the, the bread of our complaint, uh, the outer, wrappings of our complaint is kind of nice and uh, cordial, but the complaint <laughs> is hardcore. I really hate this. I want it to change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. So, um, I mean, one of the first steps actually he talks about in the book is that do you really, you know, oftentimes when we're complaining, we're kind of upset about something, maybe we're angry. And the first step is really before you serve up your complaint sandwich and, and even build it is to settle your own nervous system. Because when we are angry and we bring up something to another person, um, it's generally not received well, right? We're kind of like, they're gonna, they might have their defenses up. And um, so it, it's helpful to kind of calm yourself. And he does talk about two different ways to do this. Either we suppress our emotions or we reframe the situation. And um, basically reframing is, superior <laughs> because when we suppress our emotions it kind of comes through anyway and there can be like kind of health repercussions over time to suppressing our emotions is generally not a healthy thing because they just 
live in the body and they create stress. So reframing it like, okay, you know what, this is not so bad. And, you know, um, I'm sure we can work it out or whatever. So you just kind of find first calm yourself a bit and, um, that can help you be more effective and, um, always use eye contact if you're in, you know, in a personal situation in person with someone. And then the first piece of bread is called, he calls it the ear opener. <laughs> so we're really trying to get past the person's defense mechanisms, right? And like I said, the complaint is the meat. And then the uh, last piece of bread is called, he calls it the digestive. And it kind of helps it go down easier. Okay. So the idea, like, here's an example, like, say you're at, you know, dinner with your partner or something, and they're on their phone a ton. And you're like, would you get off your phone? You know, that's one way to not uh, be skillful or effective in complaining. But the other way would be something like, you know, wow, I'm just really enjoying being out to dinner with you. And I love having this uninterrupted time. But I do notice that when you check your phone a lot, I just start to withdraw and I get kind of upset. And I feel like you're not really here with me. And I'm wondering, I would just love it if you would just turn off your phone, maybe just for an hour or so or silence it. Would you be willing to do that? You know, I, I like the description of the ear opener and the digestion. Um, digestive. Di digestive like, think of like, layer. Like an aperitif and then digestive, like a meal. Like yeah. Help, yeah. Because, you know, that in order to get your message through, and that's the big problem with complaining, is the message doesn't get through. You may feel better after you get it out. <laughs> exactly. Although, yeah, and let me give you a suggestion. Enough already, okay? <laughs> Put the goddamn phone away, okay? And eat dinner, or take your food and go someplace else. I'm not interested, but very disrespectful. Yeah. I mean, that's the yeah. way I would handle it. Take your take your complaint <laughs> and shove it, okay? Because <laughs> if I'm not, if you don't have the person listening to you. Then your complaint is going to go fall on deaf ears. You might, and, and you're going to be vent, you're going to be venting, and they're going to resent it. Yeah. So now the other thing I really like, Michelle, is controlling your anger because uh, in my situations, I, it seems like I hold, I bottle stuff up, I hold it back until I it's ready to burst, and that's when I complain. And of course, at that point, it's it doesn't come out logically. It doesn't come out nicely. It does, you know, it comes out in all the wrong ways. And it's not going to solve the problem. It's a little messy. <laughs> okay, so okay, let's let's start with some nice New York Sunday morning fresh baked rye bread. Okay, with a crunchy outside, <laughs> sliced at the bakery, fresh. Pick it up well, with a couple of Kaiser rolls as well. And now you've got these two wonderful pieces of of delicious New York rye bread. Okay, what's what do you put inside the middle of it? <laughs> well, I mean, kind of what, going back to what John was talking about is that when we let things build up, then we probably wait a little too long, right? So maybe it's best to, you know, build your sandwich a little sooner, right? So, um, and and like, like you were saying, John, it's really about helping the message get across. like. You know, yeah, we want to feel better by maybe complaining or that that's kind of more like venting. So venting has its place. But when we're ready to actually talk to someone specific about the prompt, like we might vent to our you know friend about, you know, oh, you know, my husband's always on his phone. We go to dinner. It's so annoying, whatever. So that there's a place for that. Right. But telling your friend doesn't help the situation change with your with your spouse. So yeah. it's there's a room, there's space for that. But then at some point we need to kind of, you know, decide that we want to impact uh, the situation and how can we do that effectively, right? How are we more likely to be received? Not just so we can feel better, like, oh, I feel better. And I just like scorched the earth in front of us and, and, yeah. and, and killed, you know, not killed, but it damaged our connection and relationship. Now we have a fight that we got to deal with, right? No, let's right. see if we can do it. Um, you know, be proactive here and plan the kind of plan, not, I was going to say our attack. I don't mean that, but like plan our approach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it is, we are talking about the art of effective complaining, not just complaining, mm -hmm. complaining, <laughs> complaining is the easy part. It's making right. that sandwich and making your complaint effective and getting results. 
That's, exactly. That's the hard part. Yeah, yeah. So, so part and, of what you've been talking about is uh, uh, developing strategy for delivering a complaint with the concept of you'd like the things to improve. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're not you're not feeling yeah. good about whether it's that one time relationship with the store clerk or that you may come back to the store or you may never come back to the store, but if you'd like to feel better about being there or a long uh, standing thing with somebody who's closer to you who does the same thing over and over again that annoys you. Uh, whether whether you should be annoyed or not is not the question. It's that it does annoy you, so you want to bring it up. Uh, do you have uh, strategies though on the other side of the coin? for receiving a complaint without getting triggered. Yeah, and, and maybe we ought to do another video on that. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about in this one is really, um, and more of what he goes in, in in the book, is that there are a lot of situations in our lives where we don't, you know, we don't talk to the cable company about something. We don't talk about being having to wait two hours at our doctor's, you know, office waiting for an appointment. And a lot of us are sort of, just resigned to the way things are in terms of customer service or whatever. He has a, a lot of research in there about these situations and how, you know, there are ways, there's ways to complain effectively to a, you know, a store where the, the clerk wasn't very, was rude to us or something like that. And so to kind of like, to feel like we just can't do anything about these situations can kind of affect our self-esteem. And so it's really about learning ways to complain effectively in situations that are all around us, almost like social activism. So he doesn't talk about just personal relationships. I, I love me just, it's a great read. I just highly recommend the book. <laughs> so uh, Michelle, are you saying that um, complaining is, is good for us in the sense that we have to get it out, but in a, in a positive, effective way, as opposed to just venting? Mm. Yeah, well, like I said, venting can be helpful initially, but if it's really something that bothers you, I mean, one of the things he talks about in the book, it's just a quick little vignette. There's a woman in um, the UK who complained to Marks and Spencer, this huge department store, that all the bra sizes in the larger endowed sizes were several pounds more, so more expensive than the other bras. And she didn't get it because the blouses were the same sizes, the same prices, and so she complained, and anyway, she goes. There's a she comes to a Facebook group, da, 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 and finally, Marks and Spencer. You know, anyway, there's a long story about it, but it's just like this really bothered her. And so, you know, women who have large breasts already feel maybe you know have some you know experience of growing up that way, whatever. So this was just another insult on top that they had to pay more. Right. And so, anyway, it's just that there are situations in our lives where it's just like I don't want to tolerate this anymore. I want to make a difference here and, and change some circumstances, mm. whether it's, you know, littering at the local, you know, park yeah. or something, you know, people make a, so it's just beautiful where we can step up and make a change in our communities, in our world, really. Sure. And, 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 you know, it could be a very useful thing if we, if we believe that we knew how to complain effectively then we do more of it and and it could be very useful not only for us yes. internally but for as you say you know the society and stores or whatever person yeah. personal relationships yeah like, there's, there's, like a there's, there's, book, there's a song you know? there's a song that goes uh, a spoon's full of sugar makes the medicine go down and uh, <laughs> it seems to me that when i want to complain about something but with the hope of getting something resolved better uh, uh in, at least in my mind is that as as look? I know you know. For instance, with a clerk or something, I know you're under a lot of stress, and uh, but I really need to see these three other things before I make a decision. Is there a better time for me to come back and see them? Is there somebody else who maybe doesn't have to handle the cash register or whatever that happens to be? In other words, make it seem as if my unhappiness is not because they are inherently. A rotten person, which they may be, but because you know, I understand they may have other stresses that I understand. So how can we figure out how I can get what I want and not blame it on you? That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, because it's really about being sensitive to what's this going to be received like, right? We kind of like you know mm -hmm. walk a mile in the other person's shoes. How is this going to be received, and 
have, if I want it to be received well, I got to be thinking about that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like a very useful book. And and uh, you know what, John? Because you're the keeper of, of future things. Let's talk about how to receive complaints. Uh, That's a good idea. I, uh, I don't do well with that. I know you don't, John. <laughs> okay, you you actually. It's one of the things that really bothers about me. You about me. You really suck. When That's uh, a somebody gives you a complaint, video for us, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank so you much. again for a wonderful conversation and uh, uh, may all your complaints not be complaints, but opportunities to make things better for everybody. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.